She cheated. I'm figuring it out and it hurts. A little backstory. For the benefit of my sanity, I'll refer to my wife as Ellie and my closest buddy as Omar. Not our actual names. Ellie and I met in college and clicked immediately away. When we first began dating, I wasn't very aggressive. In fact, it was her exhibiting interest and desire in me that caused me to begin to appreciate myself and work through a slew of issues. I was simply a hardworking, geeky, clever person who had never had much success with women. It seemed almost unbelievable to me that someone as intelligent and attractive as her would show as much interest in me as I did in her. We've both always been motivated, which led to us both starting our own little enterprises by the time we left college. We moved in together after college and married a year later. We had a pretty solid marriage, in my opinion. We'd been through family tragedies, career problems, and minor and huge arguments, and we'd always managed to work through it all, and I believe it made us stronger. Ellie has always had a broad social circle that included a good number of guys, but I never gave it much attention since she never did anything that raised red lights because her social events appear to always be with a large mixed group, and I grew to trust her closest friends. As our 10-year anniversary approached, I decided to bring up the subject of raising a baby. We had chosen early on in our relationship to compromise on the size of our family. I wanted kids, she wanted none, or at most one, so we settled on one. Now, 10 years into our marriage financially stable and thinking about how good I thought our relationship was, I broached the subject. I can't help but believe that my actions may have triggered this whole line of events. She told me around three months ago that she was going out with her buddies to have some fun. She essentially told me she needed to relax since she was freaked out over my inquiring about having children again. That night, at 4 a.m., she returns, and our bedroom is entirely dark from then on. In our relationship, Ellie has always initiated as often as I have, if not more frequently, and except for brief times when we were traveling, I can't see us ever lasting more than five days without any type of intercourse. She begins going out more, protecting her phone, ignoring me, and doing things I've never seen her do before. After about 3-4 weeks of this, I chat to my closest friend, Omar, and he directs me to Reddit, where I begin reading. I eventually feel I need to do something about it, since it's starting to bother me. I don't just want to trust her. I prefer to trust my wife, and I have to trust her. Needless to say, I get my hands on her phone and start checking her calls and messages, feeling like a monster invading her privacy. One of the new folks in her social circle turns out to be an old high school love from before we were together. The more I dug, the more I... Needless to say, I get my hands on her phone and start checking her calls and messages, feeling like a monster invading her privacy. One of the new folks in her social circle turns out to be an old high school love from before we were together. The more I dug, the more I discovered. I suppose the fact that I'd always trusted her entirely made her more relaxed about concealing the affair. I discovered that he had attended that party a month before, and they had spent the whole night catching up and ended up kissing, not even really disguising it from her entire circle of people, and then coincidentally walking to the restroom at the same time. All I'd felt up to this point was a huge pit of uneasiness in my stomach, a part of me attempting to claim onto the idea of the lady I believed I'd married, a sort of self-delusion. But the anger and despair become overpowering, exacerbated by the fact that she seems clueless to my apparent apathy. She didn't realize I'd ceased making romantic gestures. I felt like I was breaking down on the inside. Finally, about a month ago, I decided to catch them in the act, and I told Ellie I was going to see my cousin for the weekend. He lives three hours away. But instead I went to stay with Omar, who has been assisting me in recording and copying everything. I waited, and sure enough, she took him to our home and placed him in our bed. I crept inside the home and made my way to our room, and the noises confirmed my suspicions. They were so engrossed in it that they didn't see me standing outside the door, capturing them with my phone. I genuinely felt something inside of me, like if something in my spirit broke so loudly that I could hear it. My veins became ice cold and I couldn't breathe because it felt like a ten-ton anvil had been dumped on my chest. I became numb. Because I only recall sections of the following few minutes, I can only tell you what Omar claims occurred in this section. According to Omar, whom I had brought as a Witness, I came over to them, yanked the man off the bed, and Omar yanked me off of him. I recall Omar pinning me to the ground. Following that, there was the expected hysteria of being apprehended. I went no contact for five weeks and started working with a lawyer, bracing myself for the worst.
Omar acted as her point of contact throughout that period since I didn't want to speak to her. Ellie called my folks to inform them that we were having troubles. We met and chatted after five weeks of NC. She was sorry and said it wasn't my fault since it was all her blame, her responsibility, and her choices. We decided to seek marital therapy to see if there was anything salvageable. I can't believe I still adore her after all of this time. I'm disgusted with myself for caring about her well-being and happiness. I really despise the fact that I now have to rethink our whole relationship. Was it only now that she became open about cheating, or had it occurred before and I didn't look deep enough, or was too trusting to notice it at all? It's been over a month since I decided to undergo marital therapy, and I have a few questions for those who have previously gone through it. One, is it feasible to reconcile without losing one's self-esteem? Two, how long does the cycle of anger, sadness, and numbness last? I'm tired of being on an emotional roller coaster all the time. Three, I despise the concept of having to be on the watch all of the time. I'm not sure whether that's a symptom of me wanting to leave or simply exhaustion. To be honest, I'll accept any suggestions. I adore her. I've been madly in love with her since we met in college, and I want to make it work. Is it really feasible, and if so, will it ever resemble what it used to be in any way? Update. After reading everyone's responses and letters, I took the weekend to process everything and solidify my resolve. I realized that if I continued with her, I would never be able to live with myself. Staying and working on it would require me to give up a big chunk of my self-esteem. I also recognize that I don't want to be in a relationship that requires me to be constantly on the lookout for symptoms of treachery. So I decided to hit the proverbial red button and destroy everything. Here's how it all played out. Monday, I awoke to an unexpected surprise. My Johnson greeted me with full attention as I opened my eyes. Guys, I can't tell you how surprised I was, given that I hadn't had morning wood since learning about Ella's affair. My body seemed to be screaming, hell yes, we're going to get this done today and be done, ready for something fresh. I literally laughed so hard when I saw it that Omar and his wife came to check on me, fearing I was having a nervous breakdown. I woke up, dressed, and phoned Ella's father to tell him we needed to chat. I met him approximately an hour before our main event. I was shocked at how calm I was the whole trip there. Deep down, I could still sense an ocean of feelings, but on the surface, I didn't feel anything. We sat together at a little mom-and-pop breakfast, join near his home. Ella's father is a wonderful guy, cheerful and witty, but most importantly, he is calm. I complimented him for how he and his wife had treated me over the years and apologized for having to have this conversation with him. He listened carefully but when I told him why I was divorcing his daughter, he got his head. I could see he was embarrassed and furious, not at me, but at Ellie. He said he understood, and I requested him not to tell Ellie since I was going to tell her in one hour. He nodded, we shook hands, and he warned me to be careful. I hated having to break his perception of her. I questioned whether I should have asked him to care for her, but I suppressed that inclination because, first and foremost, he is her father, and of course he would care for her but it is also no longer my responsibility to care for her. She is a big girl. I next proceeded to our MC session, which was on our schedule. I had spent all day Sunday preparing what I would say to her and how I would say it. For the following several hours, I intended to effectively emotion-proof my actions and words. I sat in the parking lot for 10 minutes, simply praying. I hadn't felt like I wanted or could do anything since it all began. Ellie was wearing one of the gowns I liked seeing her in when we sat down for MC, and for a few seconds I forgot everything, but then the visceral disdain and contempt I felt forced the desire entirely out. I let the counselor get things started, as I had done in prior sessions, and after approximately ten minutes of her and Ellie conversing, I cut her off. Here's how it went, myself, excuse me, but I have a few things to say to Ellie that I wanted to be able to express to her, with a neutral third party. If I am interrupted at any moment, I will just leave and that will be the end of it. Ellie, I realized I don't need to know whether this was your first time cheating. It makes no difference. I don't need to know how long it lasted. It makes no difference. I don't care how many times you cheated. It makes no difference. I'm not interested in finding out why. Even if there was an excellent explanation, a flawless one, it would be irrelevant. It doesn't matter what you did. What matters is that you did it. I now understand that the only facts that count are those that are true. You would never have children with me. At this point, Ellie opens her mouth to intervene, but I start heading to the door, so she instantly backs off. 
You were going to drag me along for as long as it took. You had to cheat on me sooner or later. At this point, the tears began to flow for her. You do not respect or love me. The counselor seems to be ready to intervene, and I reply by taking another step towards the door, which stops that. My lawyer is filing for divorce as we sit here, and your father knows the complete truth of what has been going on as of about an hour ago. Please do not contact me. Lawyers will be the only people with whom we shall contact from now on. These are the final words we'll ever say, bye-bye. I took the last few steps to the door and exited. As soon as I shut the door, I heard a howl that would haunt people's nightmares. She ran out of the office, chasing me and trying to stop me, telling me how sorry she is, how we can have a family, and to give her a second opportunity while crying uncontrollably. I pushed by her, got in my vehicle, and drove away. That ocean of emotions that had been silently lurking behind it all began to roil at this point, and I was barely keeping it in. I went to my parents' home and sent Ellis, closest friends, spouses the text message I had prepared. My father was at the shop when I arrived home, but my mother could tell I wasn't feeling well. She has always been able to read me like a book. I told her I wanted to tell her and her father something important. So we sat and waited. I'd like to thank Responsible Mode 114 for contacting me at this stage. We spoke, and he really calmed me down. Dad came around 30 minutes later. I let it all out. I felt that ocean of emotions emptying and all that agony pouring out of me as I spoke more. When I finished talking to my father, he simply held me for 20 minutes while I wept into his shirt. When it was all over, I was exhausted yet strangely at ease. I've arranged for Omar to acquire a Harley Davidson that he's had his eye on for a long. He has been more than a friend to me, and I want to do all in my power to be as good a friend to him as he has been to me. I can't wait to see his expression. I believe this is the final time I will publish since this is the conclusion of the narrative. I just wanted to say thank you, everyone. I never expected to get decent and reasonable counsel from strangers on the internet. I realize there will be a long road ahead, and that I will still need IC to cope with the fog from this disaster and regain my trust. I have to hope that if I do the job, all of this sorrow, misery, and fury would fade away gradually like roto rooter for my spirit. The rest of my life starts now, and I can honestly say I am looking forward to it.